Hi, I'm Anson the Million Dollar Crow, and you're watching Seconds Out. Hi, it's Jonathan Chagre. I'm joined today by Manchester Boxing Royalty, Joe Gallagher. How are we doing, Joe? Not too bad, thank you, mate. Good stuff. Growing up, I know you uh, you boxed at an amateur level, so you're obviously quite sporty growing up. Did you also play football at a decent level? Were you a decent player yourself? Well, listen, we all played football for our school teams and it doesn't seem to be like that no more, does it? Yeah. Um, played for Manchester boys a couple of times. Um, yeah, so it wasn't too bad and there you go, I used to like to play on the wing. <laughs> right, okay. So, yeah, so yeah, it was all right, yeah. Yeah, but you, so, but you never played at a sort of, uh, you never scouted back. No, 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 it was just, like, just like the secondary, primary school, secondary school, football, that was it, as you go through the Catholic Cups and all that type of stuff. So, right. yeah, just play at that level. And boxing was always first and foremost. Used to run from your school, yeah. play football from your school, and then box. So, in the end, something I had to give. Right, okay, because obviously speaking to a few of the lads in the gym, obviously young Marcus Morrison, who's a top prospect in the boxing world, he, I was having a chat with him yesterday and he obviously played for, for City, City you, yeah. from about 11 till 15, he was yeah, telling me, right, so yeah. there are a lot, of, uh, you know, a lot of sporty kids growing up. That, Scott that, Quigg was on the books at Berry and was released. So there are kids that sometimes yeah. they get to maybe 16 and they have to make that choice, don't yeah, they? Yeah, am, I gonna, yeah. am I gonna take boxing seriously? Am I gonna pursue football? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, obviously Marcus said when, when City released him, he, he realized he wanted For to being too the small. Have you seen the size of him now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's only about six foot one, isn't he? Yeah, I know. I'll tell you what, he's a good footballer as well. He yeah, absolutely well. can motor as well. Yeah. City seeing him again, they might sign him up. <laughs> um, well, that's, I was going to ask you, I mean, in terms of the wages, you, you alluded to it before with football and, and, and in terms of like the exorbitant wages that you get. Obviously, boxing comparatively is a gruelling sport, yeah. but only very few boxers make the kind of money that, that elite footballers make. Yeah. Is that something that you think kind of the boxing world begrudges or do they just think well you know that's the way the cookie crumbles well that's down to all the TV and the demands isn't it? the television and the sponsors that associate themselves with the, the TV rights and everything else you've got Sky and BT battling each other for Champions League rights, Premiership League rights, BBC, ITV, FA Cup rights so yeah. the money's in there and everything else and boxing unfortunately doesn't be on mainstream no more it does be a little bit on Channel 5 but it's like a on satellite services now, do you know what I mean? like BT Sport, Sky yeah. Sports, Eurosport, um, and that's it. But like you say, that, 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 that still the highest grossing sportsman out yeah. there is the likes of your May, whether it weren't reportedly close to 70 million last yeah. weekend. Is it $15,000 no yeah. a second? Yeah, or something. there's no footballers doing that at the moment. So yeah. it's still there, there's still huge demand for it. There's 80,000 there at Wembley got to watch Froge grows to. Yeah. So the, there is the demand for it, but it's getting the right fights and, and the right personalities and uh, like you say, Hay and Fury and Frotch and Groves and now Quig, Crawler and them type of kids uh, coming through, That they're, especially for Manchester, will be really good for Manchester, but the money, like you say, when signing for clubs, you know and I know there's footballers at some clubs yeah. that aren't even doing or playing and the money they're on and yet these fighters, they're putting their, their lives on the line each time they step in the ring. There was a good gloves off this week on Sky with footballers Joe Cole, Darren Bennett and Jamie Redknapp and they were all saying, God, ringside's never off in our house. They're big boxing fans. They love watching boxing, and yeah. they're from footballers. And there's no way in the world they were saying they'd get in the ring, but they have huge respect for for boxers. And yeah. it's not um, and and the skill level, and that's what's lost on a lot of people. The skill level that it is, because it's a physical game of chess um, at the biggest stage, at the biggest arena, and you've got to go and put yourself in front of 80,000 people and millions watching around the world and the chance of yourself getting knocked out takes a brave man to do that. Yeah, 100%. Um, that neatly segues actually onto my next question. I was going to say, like, football and boxing, they do go hand in hand in some respects. Like you mentioned, the ringside programme there yeah. in the post-fight presser uh, uh, rise up on the 19th of April, you know, when I asked you the question, you mentioned that um, Wayne Rooney had tweeted the good luck message to yeah. Anthony. Yeah. Um, you know, so there, there is that kind of affinity between the sports, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely. D listen, because, listen, Rooney, it's a working class sport. Boxing's a working class sport, just like football is. I mean, you're growing up in Manchester or in Liverpool, like I say, with Rooney and Crawler over here, they, they, they either play football or they go to a local boxing club in the evening times, or the girls either do netball or they either do swimming or there's cross country. So they're the main sports that everyone does around it. So they have that affinity in it. And everyone who boxes knows someone that plays football. And everyone who plays football knows someone that boxes. It's a working class sport. And, it, and um, like you say, that's it. And 
Rooney himself botched a little bit, Rio Ferdinand's been down at the gym. They, they all like it and they all watch it and uh, I know Rooney uh, watched Crawlers win over John Murray there the other week and listen, Crawlers flying the flag and I'm sure he'll be uh, getting a few pictures of a few of the United players tonight but uh, no, like you say, it's a, it's, a, it's a great sport. The thing sometimes is, as boxers, you see them, they get knocked out and the, 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 the health and the well-being is paramount and you see that they're not allowed to fight for 28 days or not of this, yet you see, and they say it's not safe, well, this year I've seen a couple of players being knocked out on the pitch and come back on in five minutes. I've seen Valencia play a game with one eye shut. Yeah. yeah, in a boxing world, that fight would have been stopped. And it's just like, yeah, listen, sometimes, but for the footballers, they've got to be better off boxing with the injuries I'm getting. Um, I was going to say then, obviously, as well, like to, to carry on the football and boxing theme, you know, the match room quite astutely, they tapped into this whole idea of the, Ma the Manchester derby when it came to, to Anthony fighting John Murray. Yeah. That was that was a bit of a marketing masterstroke in a way, wasn't it? Because it really captured the imagination of of Manchester generally. Maybe even people aren't necessarily into boxing no, exactly. were drawn to that fight. No, exactly. And not only that though, Anthony was on the pitch at Old Trafford just before it, and then the week after that, or after that, I think John Murray was on the pitch at uh, the Etihad there. So. Yeah, it was great for them, it was great for the profile, it was great for the fans to get behind it because Manchester is known as a fight city. We have the, the, we've got the best shows here, all the top fighters fight here, Nazim Hamid's fought here, Carl Zaghi, Ricky Hatton, Lennox Lewis, and Groff Roch Groves, Mike Tyson and they really do come out and support and they really know the boxing and I think, yeah, they, they were quick to acknowledge that and obviously Crawler Red and Murray are blue, it just made sense to have the derby and it was, it's the only chance uh, of a of a red beat in a blue this year. <laughs> Thank yeah. God we did. <laughs> yeah, we've got to be thankful for small mercies, haven't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, now, lovely. I mean, obviously, again, at Gallagher's gym, down at your gym, you've got the Smith Brothers, the quartet of... Uh, Liverpoolians. Of, of Liverpoolians, yeah. all English champions, and they're uh, all big Liverpool fans. Obviously, the, the kind of football-related banter must be pretty rife in the gym. Well, do you know what it is? And... Uh, I always say to them when we play Liverpool, listen, keep your phones on, lads, after the match. <laughs> the last few times I've done it, I said, keep your phones on, don't go missing on me. And do you know what? <laughs> it's Bream Roll reversed. I've had to turn my phone off. They're giving me stick flight. So, uh, no, but like you say, it's, it's great. We have good banter. Right. Um, I was joking him the other day that um, I think one of them was attending a funeral. I said, oh, did you put the plastic premiership finger banter into the ground and all that? And listen, they give it to me as well. They put the big number five up, up in the gym and... <laughs> We've seen 20 million crawlers, so listen, it's good banter, it's friendly, and uh, yeah. listen, there's, uh, listen, we're, we're very, very similar um, from both cities, both working class cities, both love our football, both love our boxing, and I think the reason why there is such a rivalry because we're so alike. Yeah, and, and does that kind of football related banter, does that help to break up the, not the monotony, but you know, the kind of routine in the gym when you're in there training hard every day? That yeah, little yeah, bit of crap oh, helps pass oh, the time, doesn't it? Definitely, but they come in sometimes giving us stick and then you just have to wipe your mouth with it. Do you know what I mean, that's time we're like, oh, I can't go, but it's just all friendly banter. Don't get nothing too silly or daft like yeah. some people do, yeah. but it's just good humour to have some fingers, so that's it. But uh, no, it's really good. We've had some. Uh, Good laugh over the years, and uh, I felt uh, like Paul Smith, Stephen Lee, and Callum there. Like I said, Callum, I don't think he was born when last time they won the league. Yeah. So it's just little things I have digs at him about <laughs> like that, and then they always keep going about Europe and all that. And it's uh, now I was saying to them this year, what would you rather? Would you rather um, use one? Um, this is why we're still in the Champions League. Would you be happy if you won the league, yeah. 19, and we won the European Cup for? And a few of them were like, no. I'd rather not win the league if you won the European <laughs> Cup, so just different things like that. Paul's got a good relationship with a, a lot of the players there, Liam, um, trains with Jamie Carragher down there at the Rotunda, yeah. and uh, Paul gets on very well with Stevie Gerrard and yeah. that, and I think they were really wanting it to, for, for Steven Gerrard to yeah. win it, do you know what I mean? So it's like that, Lampard that, and stuff. Yeah, they've got the relation as well as yeah, the, the yeah, 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 exactly, finish it, they know the lads, and, um, and that's it, they really wanted Gerrard uh, yeah. to win it. So, um, and the fact that, uh, like I say, to Gerard, he, he was like what Keane was for us uh, years, do you understand? So, uh, you can see why they wanted him to win it so, so badly. So, I think they were yeah. hurting with that sense. Right, I was chatting with Paul yesterday, and he, he's a nice lad, so obviously, uh, I didn't want to wind him up too much about it, but no, he's a nice lad. And uh, I was going to then move on to, of course, Quiggy, who's a big Berry fan. And I remember when I first started watching Scott, 
box. He always used, and he probably still does in fact, he always used to have the BFC uh, written on still his gloves. Yeah. Still has it on his gloves. I mean obviously you know United have always had an affiliation with, with Berry, being a local side, we've always loaned players to them. Yeah, the yeah. reserves used to play at Gig Lane, yeah, yeah. obviously the Neville brothers, yeah, yeah. that kind of association. In the post fight press conference of Rise Up, Eddie Hearn, you know, confirmed that hopefully we're looking at maybe a, a gig lane or a Scott Joke Quig Lane fight at some point in the summer. Yeah. That'd be special, wouldn't it? It'd be brilliant. There's talk of Obviously, Scott Quigg defending his world title and Crawler possibly fighting for a world title on the same bill. Like I say, Quigg Lane, Gig Lane, it's a, it'd be good. But I think when any kids, when we're all young, you grow up, you all want to play at the, your football pitch of your local team, whether it be United, Berry, Altrincham, Liverpool. Yeah. And I think when you become a boxer, you'd love to, and being a football fan, you want to box in the big stadiums, whether it be MGM, the MEN Arena, or the O2, what you're called. So to be able to do both of them together, to understand yeah. and Old Trafford did, that, did the Eubank Ben rematch that time, and uh, like I say, but for Scott Quigg there to, to fight at Berry, it must have get around 12,000 in it. Uh, I think that'd be a, a huge event and a, a great event, and I think it'd be well turned out, well supported, and like I say, not only that though, the two kids Quigg and Crawler, the great role models for kids, Scott Quigg who came out of school. Um, and disciplined himself and dedicated himself to the sport that he chose to do that now as a, a great role model. That doesn't mean all kids going to school and has to be released next week. Um, but he has dedication, Anthony Crawler. He's had his ups and he's had his downs. He still took them through and came through now. And he's nearly there as well. And two kids there to be able to fight for world titles on the same bill in the local area at a football stadium. You wouldn't have thought that them years ago when they first started out. So it'd be a fantastic story and also better that it's the band boxing years ago and the give it a license back now and I think it'd be a great celebration all around. I yeah. think Anthony Crawler would like to box obviously at Old Trafford and if it wasn't the case I think it'd be FC United next. Yeah, lovely. Um and I was gonna say <coughs> it's I was actually going to ask you actually, what question I did want to ask you, you mentioned their old trapping and, and potentially, you know, the boxing, the sport of boxing being featured at Old Trafford. Obviously in 93, there was the big uh, rematch with Eubank and Ben. Was that a fight that you attended? Were yeah, you at that ben, one? Yeah, Ben Eubank, yeah. Yeah, that one. What yeah. was that like that night? I mean, that that's, it, am I right in saying, I can't think of another, I know they fought in Hull, um, a football stadium and there was the one at West Ham Kevin Mitchell Ricky Hatton at the City football stadium Ricky Hatton at City yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's the only one I can recall anyway at Old Trafford yeah. what, what was it like just being no, there no. in a boxing listen, capacity listen it's brilliant mad to see you go there watching football boxing and I think it wasn't just a, a boxing fight it was an event and that's what them things are there's an event I know there was supposed to be in the Tyson Fury David Hay fight and it's a shame that didn't go ahead um, and if it did go ahead I would have loved to have seen it at Old Trafford I think Old Trafford and like you say, the theatre of dreams, it goes hand in hand and I just, whoever is in charge or whatever promotional company should work together a little bit more. I know Frank Warren did the David Hay and Fiore Echizora down at West Ham, Kevin Mitchell's fought at West Ham. There's a, there's a, there's a few stadiums there that, that uh, Michael Watson, um, Eubank was at uh, Tottenham Hotspur, I was at that one White Hart Lane, so. Are we at that one? Yeah, is that right, right. right? Yeah, so it was a, uh, the great events, the great events, like I said, this one at Wembley Stadium as well coming up, but I do think we just need that big juicy fight up here and just to put it on at the old Trafford Theatre of Dreams. It says it all, doesn't it, the Theatre of Dreams, and you can relate whatever sport there, they have rugby there, they have all sorts there, and I think uh, a suitable top boxing fight would be fantastic there. Boy, may with that I may can. Yeah, so thanks a lot for your time today. No, no, Joe, thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Yes, um, no, lovely.